This is Stone Cold Export, and in this video we're going to find out which Ryzen CPU you should go for if you have roughly $200. Should you go for the 8-core 16-thread R7-2700 or the 6-core 12-thread R5-3600? Let me start off by saying if you're not going to overclock, then go with the R5-3600. It's faster than a stock R7-2700 at multi-threaded and single-threaded workloads. On top of that, it's doing it at the same 65W TDP. So in this test, we overclocked the R7-2700 to 4.1GHz, which was as far as mine would go, and we overclocked the R5-3600 to 4.2GHz. In a few tests, I have included numbers for a stock R7-2700, but I will not be emphasizing those. I tested on an X470 Tai Chi with 16GB of 3600CL18 memory. CL16 would not run stable on the R7-2700. And I used an RTX 2070 Super for all these tests with the 431.60 drivers. Now let's get into the benchmarks. We start off with a video encoding workload in Handbrake using the 1080p30 fast preset. The R7-2700 overclocked and coded at 81 frames per second on average. The R5-3600 was 9% slower in this benchmark at 74 frames per second on average. Moving on to DaVinci Resolve, and here I rendered out the RTX 2070 Super review on both CPUs. The R7-2700 finished in 8 minutes and 31 seconds, which was 18 seconds behind the R5-3600. This is because I used the Fusion tab for the graphs, and Fusion is more dependent on single core performance, which is why we see the R5600 ahead in this test. Next up is Cinebench. In Cinebench, the R7 2700 scored 4180 points multi threaded, which is about 11% ahead of the R5600, which scored 3744 points. In the single threaded benchmark, the R7 2700 scored 422 points, which is about 12% behind the R5600 score of 477 points. Now let's move on to some gaming benchmarks. We start off with Rainbow Six Siege. In Rainbow Six Siege, the R7 2700 comes in a hair ahead of the R5600 at 200.1 frames per second on average to the 196.3 frames per second on average for the 3600. Frame times are similar here as well, and there's no major differences. Now let's see what happens if we turn render scaling down to 50%. At 50% render scaling, the R5600 takes a slight lead, about 2% for the average figure. The real difference here is in the 0.1% low figure, which is much better on the R5600, 58% better actually. And keep in mind these figures are the average of 3 runs, so the 0.1% low on the 2700 is not a one-off thing. Now let's move on to the next game, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the R5600 is slightly ahead of the R7-2700 at 106.4 frames per second on average for the 3600 to the 104.8 frames per second on average for the 2700. A 1.5% lead there for the 3600, and the frame times are also very, very similar in this title. Now let's move on to The Witcher 3. Here we go for a ride through Novigrad, and the 3600 takes a more pronounced lead here at 6% for the average FPS. Uh, when looking at the frame times though, they are very similar. Now, uh, next game is The Division 2, and in this game the average frame rate is basically the same at 114 frames per second on average. The 0.1% low is a bit worse on the R7-2700 though. A game that usually favors single-threaded performance is The Elder Scrolls Online, and this time is no different. The R5-3600 dominates the R7-2700 in this title with an 18% lead at 79.8 frames per second to the 65.6 frames per second for the 2700. The frame times are also better on the 3600. Now let's move on to Anno 1800, and in Anno 1800, the R5-3600 is 16% ahead of the R7-2700 at 38.3 frames per second on average to the 32.9 frames per second for the 2700, and the frame times, uh, they, they, well, they're nearly identical. The last game we're looking at is probably the most CPU intensive of the bunch, Battlefield 5 on the Narvik map in a server with 64 players, the R7-2700 averaged 110.6 frames per second to the 118.7 frames per second for the R5-3600, a 7% lead there for the 3600. Frame time trades blows, so the 1% low is slightly better on the R7-2700, 
but the 0.1% low is better under 3600. Now let's take a look at streaming. So uh, I streamed the very same Battlefield 5 benchmark I just ran at 1080p60 with 6 megabits per second using the X264 encoder in Streamlabs. Streamlabs reported zero dropped frames and I was watching the stream as I was benching and it seemed to be as smooth, or not smooth in this case, as the gameplay. So on the streaming side of things, this R7 2700 averaged 64.4 frames per second while streaming and gaming with 1% low of 29 frames per second and a 0.1% low of 20 frames per second. Not really playable in my opinion. The R5 3600 however had an even tougher time. 52.3 frames per second was the average for the 3600 with 1% low of 17.1 frames per second and 0.1% low of 12.7, which is bad, very bad. This is a sort of worst case scenario though, as Battlefield alone demands about 80% of the 3600 while gaming. Uh, I also streamed the Rainbow Six Siege, uh, well, streamed the Rainbow Six Siege benchmark at the same settings, and here things look a bit better. Both CPUs averaged 167 frames per second on average, but the frame times of the R7 2700 is a lot better particularly the 0.1% low, which is 48% ahead of the 3600. So if you're planning to use the CPU for streaming, the R7 2700 appears to be the better choice when overclocked. The last thing we're taking a look at is power consumption. And first off, we look at power consumption in handbrake while encoding. The R7 2700 drew an average of 212 watts through the power supply's 12 volt rail. 81% more than the R5600's 117 watts, while peak power consumption on the 12 volt rail was 121 watts for the 3600 and 246 watts for the R7 2700. While peak package power was reported uh, 127 watts for the 2700 and 71 watts for the 3600. While benchmarking in the Division 2, the R7 2700 and 2070 Super drew 320 watts from the PSU's 12 volt rail on average, with a peak of 345 watts and a peak package power of the 2700 at 85 watts. With the same GPU, the 3600 drew 293 watts from the 12 volt rail on average, with a peak of 306 watts and a peak package power of the 3600 at 53 watts. So then, if your main priority is gaming, the R5600 is the better choice. If, however, you're doing a lot of streaming or video encoding, the R7 2700 could be a better choice for you. But that is only if you overclock it. So stock for stock, the R5600 is a clear choice. And that sums up this video. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you liked this video and may you have a great day. Farewell.